right, welcome to video one in sixth grade compacted math. Hello, folks. We're going to start off with something that you know. This is dividing fractions. You've done this. You've drawn this. You've seen this. You should be very comfortable. It may look a little different or sound a little different from Mrs. A, but you know this. So how to divide a whole number by a unit fraction. Lee cut two pieces into pieces that were each one fourth of a pie. How many pieces did Lee cut? So you can see the circle, he cuts it into four equal pieces, two divided by one fourth. Well, what do we do with that two divided by one fourth? We write it as the multiplicative inverse. This KCF, keep it, change it, flip it. So we write it as a multiplication problem, right? And we change it to multiplication by multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. Um, other people will call it the reciprocal. But Mrs. A, she doesn't say reciprocal. You can see I X'd those out or crossed those out. So it's a multiplicative expression. So when we do that, 2 divided by 1 fourth becomes 2 times 4, which really is 8. There are eight pieces in our two whole circles, as you can see there. So two numbers whose product is one, that's the multiplicative inverse property. You use properties like the commutative property. Oh, three plus five is the same thing as five plus three. You know that. Well, this is the multiplicative inverse property. My favorite words in mathematics. I love them. Multiplicative inverse, it just kind of woo, 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 comes off of your tongue. So any number whose product is ends up being one, like six times one six, ooh, my board's got a wiggle in it, um, equals one. So six times one six, a number times its multiplicative inverse equals one. Two thirds times its multiplicative inverse three halves, well, I can cross cancel. Oh, you might not know cross canceling. These all factor and I get either six over six or one over one, which is just one. So we're going to talk about cross canceling a little bit. Let's go on. Okay. Um, a bottle contains two quarts of oil and a chef uses one twelfth of them. This is a bar model or a tape diagram. In the past, you might have seen those. How many days will that bottle of cooking oil last if he uses one-twelfth of the quart each day and he's got two quarts? So KCF, keep it, change it, flip it, change it to the multiplicative inverse. Oh, there's that word that I do not like. We don't say that in Mrs. A's math class. We say the real property name, multiplicative inverse. So two divided by one-twelfth is the same thing as two times 12 over one, keep it, change it, flip it, and we get 24. Sable, hope you're all writing this. So you're writing what I'm writing. I forgot to say that. You're writing what I'm writing. That's what taking notes is. That's how we do this flipped classroom. We fill in the notes in our packet. So please write these notes down. And I wrote S-A-B-L here. This is a sable. It's a full sentence answer. So sentence answer put a box around it and make sure you have the label sentence answer box label mrs a calls that sable so we've learned two new things from mrs a we don't say that our word that's bad word in mrs a's class we say multiplicative inverse and we also do sable with our math work we like to answer in full sentences page two rena cut three and they're not squares, they're rectangles. So I corrected that, although a square is a rectangle, but I'm going to call it a rectangle because a rectangle is not a square. So I'm going to call them rectangles. We're going to cut three rectangles into a number of equal pieces. Each piece was a sixth of the rectangle. In how, into how many pieces did Rena cut the three rectangles? Well, the number of pieces was six, right? And, or the number of pieces was three, and the parts that they're cutting it into is the one six. So you can see three are cut into six. The model shows the number of one sixths in one of the paper rectangles. 
was six. Courtney Green, could you please come And there are the three office. of them, Courtney so three Green, times come back six. To the main Sorry. Three times six um, equals 18, right? So three divided by one six is the same thing as three times six over one. And yes, you get 18. And here's our say ball, sentence answer box label. Dividing one sixth is the same as multiplying by six. Oh, that's not our sable. Our sable is that Rena would cut 18 pieces. 18 pieces. That's not the sable. There we go. Fix that. Okay, so Rena cut 18 pieces of the three squares. Rectangles. Um, so here's some practice for us. 3 divided by 1 fifth is the same thing as keep a change it, flip it, right? That's what I'm going to do. Keep a change it, flip it. 3, and yes, you can write the 1 or not, times 5 over 1, and you can write the 1 or not. And it's the same thing as 3 times 5, which is 15. 4 divided by a half is the same thing as 4 times 2. Yes, you can make them into those multiplicative inverses. Keep this one. Don't flip it. Don't flip the first one. Keep it. Flip the second fraction. So 4 times 2 would give us 8. Same pattern here. 6 times 5 would give us 30. And I'm sure you know all these. And 7, because they're unit fractions, we're really multiplying by whole numbers. 7 times 4 is 28. 5 times 3 is 15. And 8 times 8 one of our perfect square numbers, 64. So make sure you filled all those in. Next page. Find 5 divided by 2 thirds. Ooh, it's not a unit fraction this time. So the number of 2 thirds in 2 wholes equals 3. The number of 2 thirds in 1 whole. So the number of 2 thirds in 1 whole equals three. So we have five things, right? Here's one, two, three, four, our five original rectangles. And how many two-thirds and two holes? We can see that there is one, two, three of them because there's there's the end of two of the holes, right? Um, the number of two-thirds in one hole is one and a half of them, or three halves, so, right, in one whole, the number of two-thirds, because there's, right, there's three of them, and we have two parts of it. The number of two-thirds in five wholes, right, so five times three halves is going to give us 15 halves, or seven and a half of those, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we have half of a two-thirds, because we only have one of them, right? We only have one box left over, so we have half of a two-thirds. Here's a two-thirds, and here's one, only one box, of half of a two-thirds. So five divided by two-thirds is the keep it, change it, flip it, the same thing as keep, change, flip, same thing as five times three halves, which gives us the 15 halves. A chef cooks 12 pounds of pasta each day. She uses 3 16 pound of pasta for each serving that she prepares. How many servings of pasta does she prepare each day? So we have 12, and who wants to make 12 boxes? Not me. So you can kind of see dot, dot, dot in between. So pretend there's 12 of them, and you're cutting them into 3 16 well, 12 divided by 3 sixteenths is the same thing as 12 times 16 thirds. And here's where I cross cancel. 3 can go into that 12. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 12 four times. So now I just have 4 times 16 because there's really a 1 underneath those. So 4 times 16 is 64. You can get 64 servings that she prepares of, out of those 12 pounds of pasta, if you're only using 3 sixteenths. There's the sable, sentence answer box label. Um, so calculate the total number of pounds of pasta that she cooks. 
Yeah, and if you want to check your work, okay, 64 times 3 sixteenths, here's your check, right? In a multiplication problem or division originally, multiplying by the multiplicative inverse, a division problem, we check it by multiplying. So take your answer, 64, and multiply it by 3 sixteenths. Well, yep, yeah, 16 goes into 64 four times, 16 goes into 16 once. So yes, you would have 12 pounds. So that's your check. Take your answer of 64 and multiply it by those 3 16th surveys and you will get the original 12 pounds, right? Yep, that was correct. Yippee, we got it. Next page. Find seven and divide it into three fourths. The number of three quarters in three holes. So one, two, three holes. There are four of them, right? One, two, three, four. That's the three holes, right? The number of three quarters in one hole, well, it's one and one third or four thirds. Remember, you know how to make a mixed number to an improper. And the number of three quarters in seven holes, right? So we have Nine, and then we have a third of the three fourths, because right here's three of them, and then we have one piece of those three left over. So how many three fourths are in seven holes? Well, how do how would we do this without the bar model? Without the bar model, we would do keep it, change it, flip it, multiply by the multiplicative inverse. Dividing by three fourths is the exact same thing as multiplying by four thirds. So we're going to do that. Seven, and you can put it over the one, times four thirds. Well, three and seven don't cross cancel, and four and one don't. So we're just going to multiply our numerators and get 28, and our denominators and get three. And oh, yes, we're going to want to simplify that. I'm okay if you leave it 28 thirds. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Or yes, you can change it to the mixed number nine and one third. I'm okay with this. That is a correct answer. You do not have to always simplify. Didn't say simplify. Um, didn't say simplify. So you don't have to make it nine and one third. You can leave it 28 thirds, perfectly fine. Mrs. Johnson bought six pizzas. Each of them were cut into equal pieces for the students in her class. Each piece was three tenths of a whole pizza. How many students were there in the class if each child received only one piece of pizza? So we're taking our six pizzas, and again, da, 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 and uh, we're dividing it by three tenths, which is the same thing as six over one times 10 over three. Oh, and three goes into three once and into six twice. That's called cross canceling. I'd really like you to get comfortable with that. Two times, now we just multiply our numerators. Two times 10 is 20, one times one. Our denominator is one, 20 over one. So there were 20 students in the class. Again, that's a sable, sentence answer box label. We ans answered in a full sentence. Love that, especially if it's a word problem. So um, divide, express the quotient in simplest form. Oh, here's some practice for us. So four divided by four sevens, oops, drop on my pen. Four divided by four sevenths would be four over one times seven over four. Oh, those fours nicely cost cancel, isn't that nice? And we get seven, five, keep it, change it to multiplying by the multiplicative inverse, 13 tenths. Ooh, five and 10 have a factor of five in common. I'm gonna take it out of the five and I'm gonna take it out of the 10, cross canceling. So I'm factoring first. I'm not multiplying first. I'm dividing actually first, factoring. And then I'm going to multiply. 1 times 13 is 13. And 1 times 2 is 2. 13 halves, perfectly fine to leave it that way. But I, oh, no, it's not. It says simplest form. So not okay. So we get uh, 2 goes into 13 six times with one left over, 6 and a half. So this answer is 6 and a half. That one was 7. Six divided by two sevenths is the same thing as six times seven halves. Keep it, change it, flip it. Uh, two and six have a factor, so I'm going to factor. I'm going to divide first, factor. 
time. Um, and two goes into six, three times cross canceling. Three times seven is 21. Uh, 10, keep it, change it, flip it. Oh, look at that. Nice cross canceling practice. Five goes into five once, goes into 10 twice. So two times 14 is 28. In fact, you're getting that kick in that idea of this, right? I'm sure you know how to do this. Keep the change of flip bit. So nine times eight thirds and three goes in there. Nine, three times. Three times eight is 24. We just have one over one, so it's silly to leave it that way. Simplest form is not 24 over one, by the way. And 12 times 10 ninths. Oh, nine and 12 had a three in common. So I'm going to divide and get a three. I'm going to divide and get a four, right? Factoring a three out of 12, you get four. So I end up getting 40 thirds, not simplest form. So three goes in there uh, 13 times and one third. So 13 and one third. Normally the videos aren't quite all this long. Dividing a fraction by a fraction. Mary had three fourths of a pizza left over from a party. She cut those pieces into each, which was three eighths of the whole pizza. How many pieces did Mary cut? Now we don't have a whole number to start with. We have a fraction to start with, but we keep that fraction. Don't flip that first fraction of three fourths. Um, the model shows the three fourths of the pizza to begin with, and you're not sure what's the three fourths. That's the three fourths. And if you cut the pizza into eighths and take three of them, right? The eighths tells you how many parts to cut it into, and you're gonna group them by three. So here's the first three, right? And then here's the next three of the original eighths, right? So how many were there? Two of them, right? You can clearly see that there if you group them um, by threes. Another way to show this, that's a bar model way of showing it. Another way to show this is, Three fourths divided by three eighths, keep three fourths, change it to the multiplicative inverse of times eight thirds. Oh, and they could have nicely shown the cross canceling here, which they didn't. Four goes into four once and into eight twice. So, yes, you get the whole number two. Mary cut the pizza into two pieces. Nice sable there. Um, a plank is four fifths of a meter. Oh, can't use that. There we go. Um, a worker cuts it into equal pieces that are one tenth of a meter long. Four fifths divided by one tenth is the same thing as four fifths times 10 over one. One tenth flipped over is 10 over one. Five goes in there once, goes in there twice. So four times two gives me eight. He cut the plank into eight pieces. So, and to check it, I could start with my answer eight times what I was dividing by, my divisor, one-tenth, will I get my original answer? Yes, four-fifths, right? So I will get that four-fifths of a plank that was left over. So I know the answer is correct. Yippee. Last page, I think. Um, yes, Adam had five-sevenths of a liter of water. He used the water to fill a few glasses completely. The capacity of each glass was two of those sevenths. Again, the bar model way. Uh, not always the easiest way to do it. Um, so I'm going to use the math and say five-sevenths divided by that two-sevenths is the same thing as keep the five-sevenths, multiply by the multiplicative inverse of seven-halves, the sevens can nicely cross cancel. Two doesn't go into five evenly, so I get five halves. So I get five halves. Um, and yes, uh, if I put it in simplest form, I would get two and a half. So there, Adam filled two and a half glasses of water. Nice sable there. Uh, Lena. I uh, had two thirds of a pizza. She cut it into pieces. There were each nine, one ninth of that pizza. So she had an original two thirds. She cut it into ninths. So two thirds divided by one ninth is the same thing as keep it, change it, flip it, right? Oh, three and nine nicely cross cancel. 
so I get six, so she cut it into six pieces. Okay, now we have some practice here. I'm gonna leave this for you to do on your own. And we will go over this in class first thing tomorrow. So you do those six problems on your own right now. We'll check them over in class tomorrow. And you made it through video one. And I promise you, they're not all this long. Good job.